Hello guys, my name is Vijay Kumar Vaka. I'm working as Senior Solution Consultant in FS0. In this session, let us see few tips and tricks uh, that you need to follow as a MuleSoft developer. So these are the uh, things that we are going to discuss. So let us see one by one. Now the first thing is how to capture a flow image in AnyPoint Studio. So open AnyPoint Studio, create few flows. So here I have created few uh, dummy flows. Just uh, dragged and uh, dragged few operations from this mule palette right uh, to the canvas. And uh, in order to uh, capture this particular flow as an image, right? So right click and expo export uh, flow image to file. So if I click on save here, now you could see only this particular flow uh, you are able to save, right? Let me click on close. Of course, this is not a valid uh, flow because you need to have at least uh, one operation or uh, one processor in the process section. Okay. Now, in order to capture the whole flow, how can we do that? So click on this button, take a snapshot of the diagram. So click on this. Now you'll be able to see uh, all the flows in a single uh, image. You see here, total we have three flows uh, within this uh, mule configuration file, right? So you see I have only one mule configuration file here and uh, only three flows we have. Okay, so this is how you can capture all the flows uh, by using this option. For example, here we have very small flows, but what if you have very big flows and you cannot uh, uh, use snipping tool to capture it, right? So you, this option will be helpful at, at that time, okay? Now let us see how to stop a flow. So this option will be only uh, available on the private flow. One second. Yeah. Uh, you see here, we have two options. One is started, the other is stopped. So in order to stop your flow, you have to click this. So if you deploy this, right, then uh, this won't be in an active mode or it won't be in started mode, okay? Now let us see if we have this option for uh, subflow. Uh, let me type subflow. I remember we'll not have, yes, we don't have the option for like started or stopped for subflow, but uh, you'll find that on the private flow. Okay, so this is how you can start and stop your flow. So just click on started. Now uh, it will uh, be in the started mode. Let's check this option, remove unnecessary dependencies. In real time, for example, in order to work on a requirement, maybe uh, you'll add, let's say you'll take object store, for example, you'll add it to the canvas and later for your scenario, uh, let's say that uh, it is not a suitable option and you take database. So, and you are good with uh, uh, using uh, database instead of object store. So in, in that case, why to keep the object store in this, uh, uh, what do you say, in this section, right? So it will add memory to your application or jar file. Okay, so in that case, what you can do, you can remove the connector or remove the module. So right click and remove module so that it, it will save some, uh, it will remove unnecessary, uh, what do you say, dependencies from your project and the jar size will be very less, okay, comparatively. So this is a one good thing, uh, maybe it will be really helpful. So, so only keep uh, the modules or connectors that you are using in your Mule application. Next, let us see how to create 
postman collection so in order to do that right first you can check postman collection so the very first link it will route you to the uh, to this page so here they have given it uh, in a step by step manner but in order to uh, see how can we create postman collection uh, you have to click on this plus button so that, so that you see right here it is giving you an option to uh, name it okay so yeah let's say that uh, okay so we are done with the we are done with naming of the postman collection so inside this right you can create uh, folders let us say it is these are the test cases for sapi and let me create one more folder add folder let me name it as papi process api now uh, you see two fold two folders got created right let, let's create one more uh, add folder so total we have created three folders here right now expand this now here right you can add a file or a test case uh, click on add request you see you are able to uh, create a request right so you can name the request based upon the the request that you are sending to the sapi okay so you can fill the this uh, url information and uh, necessary headers authorization uh, parameters body etc and you can save that for example here if i type it as localhost colon 8081 slash hello so let's say this is a request okay now i can save it right click on save so you see um, okay let me close this now if i double click this uh, your test case is already saved in under sapi folder so likewise you can create multiple requests um, related to one particular mule application okay so you can you can have uh, like this you can create a postman collection in this way you can create uh, test cases for uh, papi for eapi and what can be done this whole thing can be exported as a uh, postman collection for example i have created uh, one more postman collection you could see yeah uh, we have total three cases three test cases but for sapi itself i have categorized one test case into uh, sapi test case and the two are uh, these two so what we have to do in order to create it as a file click here and uh, click on export so this will give you an option to export uh, you see will be exported as a json file so this is the recommended one so just click on export now let me save this in the same folder click on save you can open this and see how the file uh, is looking like you see this is in the json format right so so this can be given to any other developer or any other uh, uh, even i mean if, if qa guys also ne needs this information you can give to them or this is helpful for the documentation purpose as well okay so now we are good with uh, postman collection as well so let me close this now so these two are um, i mean this 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 is not very specific to mule but you may use you may need to use uh, when you're working on the uh, different integrations so file comparison right at times uh, you may have to compare pom.xmls of different projects or uh, uh, maybe you can compare the previous version and the and the new version of same mule configuration file so you can use this link or you can use any other link but we also have online uh, uh, what do you say file comparison tools uh, which i mean they'll help you in understanding the difference between the previous version of the file and the current version of the file or recent version of the same file okay so if i give like hello world and uh, here hello world how are you for example uh, let's let's compare these two things 
so that yeah whatever is the difference it will show uh, the difference in this way okay so this is one good thing you can use uh, without using uh, uh, tools like beyond compare or uh, uh, any anything uh, similar to that okay next thing and the last thing for this session is that uh, how to validate a json so one good thing is that you can make use of a dw lang dot fun itself to to validate the your json but uh, we know right uh, for very big file this cannot uh, check or validate let's say i have 5000 lines of uh, file or 10000 lines lines of json file i don't think uh, this this can handle so in that case what you can do you can you can take help of this uh, uh, i mean online uh, website like this and you can um, you can check any sample json payload okay so let me uh, add one sample json payload and let's validate that okay so i have some sample payloads right here so let me copy this so let's try to check if it is a valid json or not so you see it is a valid json fine now for example if i add a comma here or uh, see it is saying some error right okay so you can understand this way for example if i give single quotes uh, i think uh, yeah you see it's not taking you in the single quotes as well right you have to always keep it as double quotes only when uh, right now it is a valid json so this way you can validate your input json file okay so this is one of the online validators of json you can verify in any other websites as well okay so this way these are uh, these are few tricks for this session but uh, if i uh, get to know or if if I remember any uh, other uh, tips and tricks I'll share in my next session and I hope you liked it uh, please uh, share and subscribe for more videos thank you so much for listening to my video